Good morning. I'm in Romsey today in Hampshire. I'm going to have a walk around the town to see what's going on today, but also look at some of the historical buildings in the town as well. So come and join me. We're starting our walk in Bell Street. This is one of the earliest inhabited areas of Romsey. The white building on our right used to be a brewery, but no longer. On our left, we're passing the very popular bar and brasserie, La Parisienne. Across the road, we can see the Baptist Church. Brad Beers, on our right, is a popular department store, which still seems to be thriving, which is good to see. We'll turn off now into the corn market. On our left we can see the Barclays Bank building. This was originally the corn exchange where the farmers sold their wheat, oats and barley. We'll continue on up to the main marketplace. This area of the town has recently been pedestrianised. The statue that we can see is of Lord Palmerston, who held several offices of state and was British Prime Minister twice in the mid 19th century. Palmerston owned the nearby country estate of Broadlands, which had been in his family for over a hundred years. He's the last British Prime Minister to die in office in 1865. Although Palmerston wanted to be buried at Romsey Abbey, the Cabinet insisted that he should have a state funeral and he was actually buried at Westminster Abbey. The Town Hall is to our left. This was commissioned by Palmerston and completed in 1866, a year after Palmerston died. You might be wondering about the colourful crocheted covers on the bollards here. It's Romsey Festival fortnight at the moment and these are part of the town's decorations, made by various charities and women's institutes. I think they're lovely. The building on our right, behind the van, was originally a pub, but it's now home to the local Conservative Club. We'll head up Church Street now. The attractive house on our left is Pinchpenny House. It got its name because it used to be owned by a tax collector. King John's house was originally built in the 13th century but the part that we can see here was added in the 16th century. It now houses a town museum. There's also a tea rooms here and a lovely tranquil garden that we'll have a look at. This is a very impressive bug house, more a bug mansion really. A very peaceful place in the middle of the town. We've crossed the road now and this impressive building is Romsey Abbey. This is the parish church of Romsey. It was built by the Normans in the 12th century 
on the site of a previous Anglo-Saxon church. It was a nunnery until Henry VIII disbanded the monasteries and priories and confiscated their lands and property. The town purchased the abbey buildings from the Crown in 1544. It cost £100. You can find out more about Romsey Abbey at the link that I pasted in the text below. The building behind the trees in front of us is Folly House. This was originally built as the Vicarage. A nice home for the vicar. We'll walk past the west aspect of the abbey and up the south side. On the wall we can see a rood or crucifix. This was originally in the Saxon church which was replaced when the Normans rebuilt the abbey. They moved it to this site. A number of prominent people are buried here. The most recent is Earl Mountbatten of Burma, who lived at Broadlands, which, if you recall from earlier, was previously owned by Lord Palmerston. Louis Mountbatten was Prince Philip's uncle, and when Prince Philip married the Queen, they spent their honeymoon here at Broadlands. On the 27th of August 1979, Earl Mountbatten, his grandson Nicholas and two others were assassinated by a bomb set by members of the IRA hidden aboard the fishing boat in County Sligo which was being used by the party. Earl Matt Batten was buried here following a ceremonial funeral in Westminster Abbey. We'll conclude this first walk through historic Romsey with a short walk in the eastern part of the town. The impressive building on our left is now an Italian restaurant. It still retains the original beams inside. Here's Romsey's Methodist Church. You might be wondering why Romsey developed into a town. Here's a clue. In the Middle Ages, Romsey's woolen and tanning industries were behind the town's growth. Now we're passing Queen's Terrace, with a plaque commemorating Queen Victoria's Diamond Jubilee in 1897. Further along the street, we arrive at a lovely Art Deco building which is the Plaza Theatre. The building is owned and managed by the Romsey Amateur Operatic and Dramatic Society and all of the members are volunteers. That brings us to the end of our first walk around the centre of Romsey. In the second episode we'll take a walk around the west and southern parts of the town and discover some more of its history. Thanks for watching.